A uh, few more details have not been decided yet, but I will let everybody know when her service is. But she did pass away yesterday evening about 6.30, so please keep her family and friends in your prayers. Um, let me see. We got, you got something, I know. Because you always do. Yes. So, confirmation students, reminder, uh, next Sunday is your deadline for your coupon books, and their goal is to get them all sold because they have a challenge. If they get them all sold, Pastor and I have agreed to get pied in the face with whatever material and things that they want to pie us with. So, uh, if you don't sell them all, then we get to pie them. That would be really fun. <laughs> that would be. <laughs> there you go. There's a little incentive. Jameson right? is saying no in the balcony, so there's no other. I mean, Josie's not saying it. She's just shaking her head. <laughs> All right. Are they graduates coming? They're just hanging out. They're just hanging out outside. Eating cookies. Yeah. Meaning cookies. <laughs> well, speaking of that, um, after church, you are welcome to go outside, and um, the graduates will stand outside again. And if you didn't catch them this morning, you can congratulate them. Um, on the way out of church, out of the front doors, and if you want goodies, there are plenty, you can take some. So, those will be still out there. Well, that church depends. I mean, the graduates have been out there eating for the last That's minutes. true, <laughs> but also the Sunday school kids went in second. second okay. so. Some of them are teenage boys. I don't know why they eat. <laughs> yes. All right. All right. Uh, anything else we need to highlight before we begin? Okay, seeing none, let us rise and begin our worship with the brief order of confession and forgiveness. And we begin this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake, <clears throat> he forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our opening hymn is number 315 in the Green Hymnal, Love Divine, All Loves Excel.
Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Our first lesson is from the book of Acts, chapter 10. While Peter shares the good news of Jesus with a Gentile soldier and his family, the Holy Spirit comes upon them. Recognizing that the Spirit works inclusively in the lives of both Jews and Gentiles, Peter commands that these Gentiles also be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Our reading begins with verse 44. While Peter was speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. They were circumcised believers who had come with Peter, and they were astounded that the gifts of the Holy Spirit would be poured out even on these Gentiles. For they had heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water from baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And so he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. Here ends the reading. Please join me in saying responsibly, Solomon, eat our boy colored print you respond to the dark. 
Sing to the Lord, sing a new song to the Lord who has done marvelous things, whose right hand and holy arm have won the victory. O Lord, you have made known your victory. You have revealed your righteousness in the sight of the nations. You remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice, and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, and the world and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord who comes to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Our second lesson is from the first letter of John, the fifth chapter. God's children believe that Jesus is the Messiah and love God by keeping God's commandments. Thus the world is conquered not through military might, but through love and faith. Our reading begins in verse 1. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we, we love the children of God when we love God and obey His commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey His commandments, and His commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who would who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with water only, but with water and the blood, and the Spirit is the one who testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. Here ends the reading. Please rise for the Gospel of the day. Hagen. 
Ava Hayden, Ooh. Meredith Rouse, Liza Saxton, Brett Saxton, Josie Saxton, and Jameson Bovers. Janice over there. 
She's up behind She's you. sitting by the board here. Kristen did a, the lion's share of the uh, online stuff. But there are also some <laughs> things to do. There were also several other teachers that helped and assisted, including some high school kids. Um, and without them, none of this would have been possible. And I'm deeply grateful for those who share their gifts in that way. So thank you. And uh, we look forward to another good Sunday school year next year. I want you to notice that we placed the graduate recognition after the sermon, so that I can get through the sermon. Although the record will show, I got through the graduate blessing for one of these graduates at Lost Island just a while ago. So if I can do it then, I can probably do it now. I may go hide in the sacristy during Kristen's video because that's what got me last year when there was nobody in the building. So we'll see. All right, you guys in the front, buckle up and get comfortable. This is going to be a long one. Not really. <laughs> uh, although these words are primarily for you, and I'm going to invite everybody else to listen in. Sisters and brothers in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue our journey today through the 15th chapter of the Gospel of John, and we go further into exploring what it is to abide in Christ. In many ways, this passage could be subtitled Instructions for the Christian Life and Discipleship, or conversely, it could be called Instructions for You Graduates Who We Now Have to Let Go into the Wide Wide World and Go on Your Own. This is what I want you to take with you, and this is what I know your parents want you to take with you. Last week, as we began to explore the 15th chapter, we were, we were reminded that we are grafted to Christ. He is the vine, the source of all life, and we are the branches grafted to the vine through baptism into Christ. This week, Christ begins to lay out for us what we are to do with that connectedness. Now that we're stuck to the vine, what are we going to do with it? <clears throat> now, figuring out what one is going to do is one of the main challenges and joy of life. And I've asked all of these kids, what are your plans? And, and all of them say, well, I have some general idea, but I don't have the details worked out yet. And there's one brave soul who said, I have no idea. I'm still waiting to see. That's the way life goes sometimes. And it drives us crazy, doesn't it? But Christ isn't talking in specifics today. 
He isn't saying that you have to have figured out exactly what you're going to do for the next 70 or 80 years. But he is talking in some rather broad generalities that set parameters around our life within which we can grow and flourish, particularly grow in faith and love, and continue to live into and discover the gifts of the Spirit and begin to bear the fruit of the Spirit for the growth of the kingdom and for abundant life. So, if you're looking for a specific direction today, you're not going to find it. Although I will tell you that whatever you choose to do, do it wholeheartedly and do the best you can. Beyond that, it's up to you. Today's text and the words of Christ in our gospel for today give you a solid foundation from which to begin. But what you do with it from this point on is in large part up to you. Whether you pass or fail your college classes, that's not my problem. Because I'm not going to be there to knock on your door and remind you that you need to get this done. Whether you succeed or fail in basic training is not my problem. Although I will tell you, I will be praying for you as you go through basic training. It is true that God does work directly sometimes. The scripture is full of accounts of people who met God face to face or whom God tapped on the shoulder and said, <clears throat> I want you to go over here. He spoke in a burning bush to Moses and said, go and free my people. And Moses said, who me? And God said, yes, you. He spoke to Noah and said, build an ark and save your family and the animals. He spoke to Philip and said, go and talk to that man in the chariot. And he spoke to the other disciples. And God certainly worked his most directly in the person and ministry and teachings of Christ. So that is abundantly clear that God does work directly in many circumstances. But it is also abundantly clear and true that God works quite often in the indirect. Through people and circumstances that invite us to lean into and to discover our God-given gifts and talents by also figuring out how to best put them into play. And as Kristen and I have been talking about this day, for a lot of these many months, we've been sharing a lot of stories from when you guys were a whole lot smaller than you are now. Okay, this is the, this is the last batch of our first group. These are our kids. And sitting in this front row is at least one kid who said, I can't do a devotion for youth group. <laughs> But then he dropped a great one on us, and somebody who shall remain nameless went on for 45 minutes. <laughs> then he had to stop fussing at me about the length of my sermons. <laughs> Either way, God works, directly or indirectly. Both are equally valid, both are powerful. But the indirect way is most often, at least for me, been just a tiny bit frustrating. Until I recall this foundation that Christ talks about in our gospel for today. Because that's the foundation upon which our discipleship rests. First, we are told to abide in love. And I can see it, I can see the thought bubbles now. Okay, Pastor, that's $15 church language. What does that mean? What does it mean to abide in love? Well, let's unpack that just a little bit. Because this reminder to abide in love is a good one, because it's easy for us to lose sight of love, even Christ's love. And it's easy to lose sight of that because we get so caught up in the doing of life and in the doing of discipleship that we may forget the being or the abiding of discipleship. This is the good reminder that in the midst of whatever may come, and in the midst of however busy it may get, and it's going to get busy, that we need to take time to remind ourselves and to be reminded that we don't do this alone, that we are connected not only to Christ, but also to a wider community of faithful people. 
This is the community that gave your faith birth. Many of you were baptized at this font. You have all been fed at this table. This is the community that nourished and sustained your faith through this portion of your life. And as we get ready to let you go so that you can spread your wings and fly, I'm going to challenge you to find the community of faith within which to live and move and be. Surround yourself with supportive people. People who, are, who will remind you of Christ's love, especially when times get hard. Christ in this gospel is calling our attention again to the fact that he is the root of life. And at the root of all that Christ is and all that Christ does, is divine love. And we are wrapped in that love just as Christ is wrapped in that love. And furthermore, as that love gave him the will to be obedient and respond to the Father's call, so too that love which you are wrapped in, that began in this place, will enable you to enter into your own call as a disciple and live the life that we are all called to live. Number two. It is easy to read the opening verses of today's gospel as conditional because Jesus says, if you, do, if you love me, then you will do this. And these if-then statements are conditional. Saying the then won't happen until you do the if. But theologically, this can lead one to a case of the heebie-jeebies. So perhaps a better translation and a more accurate one would be to say that since you are in this love, and you are, then you are able to keep my commandments. And this is classical Lutheran understanding. The understanding that God provides us with what we need to fully live and be his beloved people. And a reminder that we cannot, any of us, keep the commandments as fully as we ought. Nor can we fully keep ourselves in God's love without God's help. Through our own efforts, we will always fall short, even by this much. But through God's efforts, and through the work of the Spirit, we are grafted to this vine. And since we are grafted to the vine of God's love, God's Spirit and God's love will keep us there, simply because God chooses to do so. And because we are connected to that divine source of love, we are able to reach out and love others, even those whom we might deem as unlovable. Because that's part of what it is to be a disciple. We are commanded to share that love that we have with one another and the communities in which God places us. And then Jesus says to the disciples, and I'm going to say to you, I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Just as healthy plants and vines bear fruit, so too do the disciples of Christ. This fruit bearing, this blossoming and this growth and this outcome is a natural result of abiding, a natural result of remaining connected to the source of life. Since we are grafted to the vine and continue to abide, abide in the vine, we bear fruit. Note that this is a reality, not a goal that we must achieve. When Jesus says, I appoint you to go and bear fruit, his word makes it happen. Just like his word spoke creation into being. Just like his word Wipe away your sin. The bearing of your fruit will happen. It's not something you have to achieve. It's something that we do because that's when a disciple who is grafted to the vine and connected to the vine and who continues to abide in the vine does. You bear fruit. This is both good news and a challenge. 
It is good news because then we don't have to sit around and figure out how or when or what type of fruit to bear. Because that's not up to us. What may be up to us is the challenge of letting that fruit be seen. The challenge of letting that fruit shine. Which is to say, the challenge of living and being in such a way that allows the fruit that I bear, whatever it is, both to become known and to point to Christ. And again, you don't have to have all of this figured out right now. None of us do. But we have to pay attention to the fruits that we bear and how we put them into play. And Christ does all of this stuff for us that our joy may be in him and that our joy may be complete. Joy and grace have the same root word in Scripture. So then what is joy? What is grace? It is nothing more and nothing less than abiding in Christ. It is nothing more and nothing less than being fed and nourished by that relationship in spite of what else may happen in life. The first thing that Christ brings forth in you is grace and joy. Christ proclaims this and it becomes a reality. Just like the fruit bearer, Christ proclaims this and it happens. And it brings about a fullness that resonates deep in the soul. Even in times of great difficulty and distress, we can feel deep and abiding joy, deep and abiding grace, deep and abiding completeness. Because that joy and completeness is not dependent on us alone, but is a condition that flows from this deep and lasting connection to the vine and source of life. It is this connection that allows us and maybe even compels us to come to proclaim that God is in control in all things that happen, so that I don't have to sweat over much about the small stuff. Rather, our call is to simply live in such a way that the grace of God is allowed to flow in us and through us as a testimony to God's presence and power in our living from day to day. You don't have to do great and miraculous things. Well, you may. You don't have to have everything perfect. Although you may come close. But what you do have to do is live your life to the fullest. Live your life to the fullest and remain connected to the one who named you and claimed you as his own. Because we are not promised that whatever comes will always be easy. We all know that. But what we are promised is the presence and life-sustaining Spirit of God, which goes with us on this journey and will go with you as you leave this place and go discover for yourself what life may bring. We are promised this presence and life-sustaining spirit because that's what discipleship is. Not a goal to be achieved, but a journey taken in faith. A journey taken one step at a time. A journey that we might not even be able to see the end of. But a journey taken with the one who first knit us together and named us and claimed us as his own. And a journey taken with the one who delights in seeing how we grow and the fruit that we bear. And how that fruit that we bear shapes the world around us in big ways and small ways as we do the work he has gifted us and called us to do. And as we become the people and the disciples he has called us to be. So step forward boldly. All of you, not 
not just these five graduates up here. I know there's only four, but Haley's sitting right next to Joni, you just can't see her. <laughs> Step forward boldly, my friends. Step forward with confidence. Step forward with grace. Step forward with love. And as we say in the baptism service, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven.
which that 375 will buy you a cup of coffee and taste you. But here's what I want you to know. In our gospel for today, Jesus talks about bearing fruit. And I have to confess that I cannot wait to see the fruit that you bear as you begin this next stage in your life. I've known you a long time. I've known one of you for your entire life. And it's been an absolute joy to be your pastor and to watch you grow and learn and have fun together and go on mission trips and confirmation and all that other stuff that we did. And I cannot wait to see where God takes you next. And I know that God will bless you forever. There we go. Yeah, but that was the fourth take. Together we confess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us take a moment to greet one another safely with the peace of Christ. Peace. Peace to those who are here, peace to those who are watching, and peace to those who will be listening and later. Let us also now pray, giving thanks to God for the gifts that he gives and the portion that we return. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, in whom we abide, we now bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer with steadfast love. Loving God, you call us to be your fruit-bearing people and your fruit-bearing church. We ask that you strengthen the bonds among us and all Christian churches, that we may know that we are connected and that we may abide together in your love. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of creation, all the earth praises you. The seas roar and the hills sing for joy. Fill the earth with your love, so that by their song all creatures on land and sea, sky and burrowing and soaring, may call us to join them in praise. Be with those who tend and till the land and bring forth an abundant harvest, which we may share with those in need. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Faithful Savior, you conquer the world not with weapons, but with undying love. Plant your wisdom and your word in the heart of our leaders in this community, in this nation, and in this world. And give us all your spirit, so that we may all live and abide together in peace. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of healing, you forget no one and accompany those who are lonely or who are ill of body, mind, or spirit. We ask you to provide for the needs of those who need specialized care and be with those who are sick and suffering. Especially today we pray for Dave Xanthus, Becky Walker, Bill Orton, Father Clem Kearns, Don Coco, Roger Will, Bob Morrison Jr., Linda Jury, Danny Otto, Phyllis Schroeder, Janice Campbell, Teresa Jensen, Garland Anderson, Connie Yonker, Lucille Anderson, and all those we now name either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Gracious God, as a mother comforts her child, so too do you comfort us. We ask you to bless all mothers and those who stand in the stead of mothers that touch our lives. Comfort those who miss their mothers. Comfort mothers who grieve. Comfort those who grieve because they cannot be mothers and those who have never known a loving mother. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gentle Redeemer, Alpha and Omega, beginning and end, all who die abide in your presence forever. And we remember with thanksgiving those who have shared your love through their lives among us. Especially today, we give thanks for the life and witness of Linda Umbro in the midst of this community. And we ask that you keep her family and friends in your care as they mourn her passing. Until such time as we are reunited with them, in your everlasting love. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. All of these things, O God, we raise up in hope of new life in Christ, trusting in your never-failing goodness and mercy. We offer our prayers, spoken and unspoken, in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we're singing the last hymn, I would invite the graduates to process down the aisle so that people can greet them on the way out. Our final hymn is <clears throat> number, let's see, where are we? 263, the Green Hymnal, Abide with Us, Our Savior. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.